Have you ever been in a financial pinch where payday just seems a little too far away? You've got bills to pay and the stress is mounting. So you see an ad for a payday loan. It promises quick cash with no hassle. It sounds perfect for the situation you're in, right? Well, it might seem like a lifeline, but here's the truth. Payday loans are one of the most dangerous financial traps that you can fall into. They are designed to pull you into a vicious cycle of debt that's nearly impossible to escape. In this episode, I'm going to show you why payday loans are never an answer and how even one wrong move can send you spiraling. Stick with me because by the end of this episode, you will understand exactly why you need to stay away, far away from payday loans and what smarter options are out there that you can use instead. So let's dive in. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror. Where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. Welcome to the Financial Mirror and thanks for joining me today as we continue to work to improve the one thing that we can control ourselves. Here at the Financial Mirror, it is not about the numbers and spreadsheets alone, but about transforming and educating you on money so that you can make smarter financial decisions. If this is the first time you are joining in, don't forget to hit subscribe on YouTube to be notified of all the new episodes as they release. If you are listening to this on Rumble, don't forget to like the video and follow the channel. And if you are on any podcast platform of your choice, go ahead and like the video and share it with all of your friends, family, and coworkers. So today we are talking about payday loans. I have never done an episode on payday loans, and I cannot believe that that is the case because the more and more that uh, people are finding themselves in some some very, very peculiar spots where they just need a little bit of a bailout very, very quickly, they are turning to payday loans and I see these shops, quick cash, fast money, all these things that are popping up everywhere and I just want to help all of my listeners and viewers educate you on why that is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. So today we are going to break down exactly what payday loans are and how you can prevent having to get into one with some financial alternatives. It is going to be a episode with some information that you may just not have known. Uh, And if you hear someone in your circle, maybe this isn't you. Let me just say this. Maybe this isn't you and this is someone in your circle at work family member, whatever the case is, that you hear are over here talking about payday loans, you can jump in quickly and help them from going down this this terrible, terrible financial spiral. So what exactly is a payday loan? And let's start there. Let's break down exactly what is a payday loan. A payday loan really has no like set definition. This is coming from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, but it really has no like set like definition of what a payday loan is. But normally speaking, it's a it's a short term loan. It is not intended. It's not like a, a personal loan where you're you're signing up for maybe a three year personal loan, uh, interest rate between probably like eight and fifteen percent. That is not what this is. This is usually for a small amount, very, very short term, or so they say. That you're literally like it, it, it has its name for a reason, a payday loan. It is meant to be, I'm a little short this month. I'm gonna go grab a little money. It's gonna get me to the end of the month, and then I'm going to be able to pay it back next month because I'm gonna do better. Right? Like that is the concept. Uh last episode, we talked a lot about how to manage your money with various pay cycles. I encourage you to go listen to that. Uh, Definitely will help you from getting into this situation where you're out of money by the end of the month, but how to better manage it regardless if you get paid weekly or bi-weekly or uh, monthly or, you know, first and 15th or whatever the case is, it should help. However, this episode is about you got there, now what? And Many people are resorting to payday loans because you see these ads everywhere. They're promising fast cash, no credit check. But here's the catch. These loans come with 
astronomical interest rates. The average interest rate for one of these loans, one of these payday loans is around, you know, almost 400%. Some of them are like 300, maybe 200. Some states have certain laws that help you get it down to like 150, but like 150% loan, uh, you know, like I said, it's meant to be short term. It's meant to be paid back. The problem is that many people are not able to do so. So uh, like I said, if you if you think about these uh, from context of like a credit card interest rate, a credit card interest rate averages around 15 to 30 percent. Average personal loan rate is like eight to 13 percent or eight to 15 percent or something like that. Like it kind of goes like personal loan and then credit card in terms of like interest rates. Um but you kind of look at the convenience factor there and, and credit cards much more convenient. So they have a slightly higher interest rate. A personal loan is a little bit more formal. It's like it's like the formal loan. Uh, so you get you get a little bit better interest rate, but it's like I said, it's a little bit more formal. We've got more of a credit check, things like that. Credit card is going to get you to about the 15 to 30 and then you're going to go payday loan and you're up over 100 percent guaranteed. So many states kind of look at these as being around $500. Around $500 is kind of that limit. That's kind of the loan limit on in some states. Some are higher, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of what that payday loan amount is. Like when you consider it a payday loan, like what are you really looking for? That's kind of the first thing is the small amount. The next is the sh relatively short time frames, like within days. Some of those time frames are within like days you need to pay this back. Uh, you know, looking forward to like the next payday. If you get paid every two weeks, maybe you do like a 14 day payday loan or something of that nature. Uh, many don't have a credit check or any type of like financial check. And, you know, that's kind of how these work. The interesting part though, is that it's not equivalent to like these like flat, like credit cards, the average credit card rate is like 24.99%. Like that's probably the average one I see with clients when I'm looking at like various credit scores across the board. How payday loans work is you have a fee that gets normally charged on top of the every hundred dollars borrowed or, or something of that nature, some type of, 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 of stipulation like that, that you're going to get. And it's going to be, you're going to pay a certain fee uh, for, every hundred dollars borrowed or something of that nature. What that equates to is that if you're taking out like $500 loans, like you are paying well over a hundred percent in, in your, your overall APR overall annual percentage rate, which is bananas, like super duper bananas, right? Um, it is just so much money that goes into it. Now that's not the scary part. It is scary, right? Like that is a, a scary, scary thing when you can walk into a business, they don't check any type of credit, and you walk out with $500 expecting to have to pay that back in, let's say, two weeks, right? Like that is scary. Um, however, that is, is not like the scariest thing. The scariest thing happens when you think about the vicious cycle that comes after the fact, right? Because this is the heart of the issue. And this is why I tell you there's such a bad idea. Payday loans put you in a very, very vicious cycle. So let's say you borrowed $300 and you were expecting to pay it off the next time your paycheck arrives. Like you, you go and you take out this loan for $300 and you're like, I just need it to get me to the end of the month. I just need to squeeze out a little bit more. And you get it. You take the payday loan and you got the money. Here's what I want you to think about. Everything has to go perfect the next two weeks. Right? Like everything has to go perfect. Something got you in the situation where you ran out of money last month on the same paycheck. The same amount of money last month. You had to go get up. You resorted to a payday loan. What if that same month hits you again? What if life throws you the same curveball? Maybe your car breaks down. Maybe your car broke down last month, and then this month your hours get cut. Maybe that last month you had an unexpected medical bill, and then this month you have 
like a maintenance problem with your car or you, or your hours got cut like like all these things like they can just fall in place or you have these unexpected expenses home repairs like all of these things could go wrong and you're now holding this payday loan right so what happens what happens right like you you have to pay this back or you have to hold it and get slammed with a hundred plus percent interest rate, right? So you can see how very, very quickly, if you can't pay the loan back, the lender extends it for another two weeks. Guess what? They tack on extra fees. They, or, you know, you roll your, your loan into a new one, or, or maybe you owe more than you borrowed. And it just, it is it's compounding and compounding and compounding. And before you know it, you are stuck in a loop where you're borrowing more just to cover the last loan. And then the debt starts piling on faster and you can't pay it off. And you go from owing like $300 to 400 to 500 and and it doesn't stop. It just keeps going and going and going. And you're over a thousand dollars all from this original $300 payday loan. It, It is bananas. It is bananas how much trouble a payday loan can get you into. And this is how payday loans trap people. It is a cycle that is incredibly hard to break, especially when you're already like living paycheck to paycheck. Like last month you were tight. You got a payday loan. This month you're now even tighter and something could happen that all of a sudden puts you right back in the same situation. So it's very, very important that you avoid these at all costs, at all costs. And and some states out there uh, did pull this up. There are certain states out there that um, just don't allow this. So if you are in one of those states, lucky you, this isn't an option. Um, but, you know, this is off of um, the, what is this? SL, the National Conference of State Legislatures. That's what this is, payday lending state statutes. So you can see what each state's laws are. Uh, Alabama 500, not less than 10 days and not more than 31 days, uh, minimum long or maximum long term, excuse me. Um, Alaska's 500, Arizona and Arkansas are both prohibited. Um, but you can kind of see across the board various loans like Delaware has up to a thousand. Um, it has to be for less than 60 days. Washington, D.C. is prohibited. Georgia, uh, Hawaii. Guam not available, uh, but you can kind of see through here. There's a few of them that are prohibited. Most of them are 500. Louisiana's 350. Um, yeah, so a couple prohibited. 300 to 500 is kind of the New Mexico, North Carolina, both prohibited. Uh, I'm trying to see all the ones that are prohibited. And do 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 do. That's everything. So all these other ones, like I said, you can see it's 300 to 500. It's kind of, that's a lot. Virginia's 2,500 maximum loan amount. Jeez, that is hefty for a payday loan. That is hefty. Uh, But yeah, you can see how all of these are are very much all over the place. Every state has their own. Every, Every, you know, there's different maximum loan terms. There's different maximum values. All these things vary. So you have to kind of look at your state to see how how you how you can kind of uh, uh, accommodate, you know, like pushing for these things to all be eliminated. Like we don't really want payday loans at all, but, you know, some states are, are, are pre- preventing it and others are not. But you might be wondering, aren't there like like when the, there are laws or when there's not laws, how do people get protected from these things, right? Um, in some states, like I showed you, there are like total outright prohibition of them. Other states, there's limits on interest rates potentially. But I have to tell you that even on those like limit limiting areas, payday lenders are clever. They, they find ways to kind of get around some of the laws. I'm not saying they're all perfect. Uh, it's just a it's just a nasty business. Like I'm sorry if you run a payday loan business, you make a ton of money. I know you do, um, but it's just a nasty business. Like I, I I'm just being honest. Like it is a it is a a very 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 nasty business. But uh, I would tell you this: if 
you are ever thinking is about it's a good idea ever think it's a good idea just go go look at any anything out there and i would tell you that it's probably a better idea than a payday loan like any debt out there is probably a better idea than the payday loan i'm not i'm definitely not condoning you to go get into debt but if you had to choose between payday loan, credit card, and personal loan, like payday loan would definitely be the last one that I would ever, ever, ever tell you is the best. It's like the worst of the three. Let's just say that. It is by far the worst of the three. So let me be clear. Payday loans are never a good idea. They are designed to pull you into debt with these like high interest rates and fees that make it almost impossible to get ahead. Even if if you're in a tough situation, payday loans are not ever the solution, not ever the solution. So the moment you take one out, you are gambling with your future financial stability because you have the odds stacked against you. You need everything to go perfect by the time your next paycheck comes around. And let's say it does and you pay it off. And because you use the money to pay it off now and then something happens, you are you going to go back and get another one? Like when you run out of money again, like is are you now in that cycle where it's a constant like pay off, get another, pay off, get another? I I, I just I, I cannot see any any time where it's just a great idea. So, what are some alternatives? What are some alternatives? Well, I wanted to give you a few that would really would really help if you were in this situation. You'd gotten to the point where you. We're out of money. Month is not yet over. You're not near your your next paycheck, whatever the case is. What can you do? The number one thing you can do is communicate. Communicate with your creditors. Communicate with the people that you owe money to. Communicate. Did you know that many companies are willing to work with you if you just ask? (laughs) Many companies will work with you if you just ask. Most of the time, people stay stressed about paying someone that in reality, if you just called them up, I was like, hey, I'm out of money. I can't pay you. And if you could just, is there some other option that we can do to kind of work things out so that I can catch up and and pay you? Most are, I'll be honest, most are willing to work with people, whether it's your utility bill or your rent or medical expenses. If you'll call those service providers or your landlord, or whatever the case is, explain your situation, you will often find they are open, open, open to splitting up payments or extending deadlines. They are. Don't think that they're just the, the, the you know, the big bad wolf out there that is just going to blow you away as soon as you ask for a, a, a little grace and mercy, right? Like it's, it, it's not as like it's more in your head than it is in reality. Uh, so that's the first thing I would do is I would call and I would negotiate not even negotiate. I would just ask, you know, like, it's not like, Hey, you know, can maybe, can you, can you let me just do this and I'll do this? Like, like, no, like just say, like, I'm, I'm struggling. I need, I need a little help. Like what, what options are out there and see what they can provide. That's the first thing I would do. Second thing I would do is go earn more money, right? There is gig work everywhere. Nowadays, online companies like 1099 contractor type jobs, like Uh, Instacart, like Uber Eats, like DoorDash. Um, I mean, we can keep going. Like all these little gig jobs, go pick one up. The max you can do in a lot of these states is like $500 for most states. I know there were some that were over a thousand, but for most states, the max you can do is $500. Do you know how long it would take you to go earn 500 extra dollars from like gig work? maybe a a few days of doing it, right? I did an episode like, it's been a couple years ago now and I don't know what it's like now, but like in a few weeks of doing Instacart, I I like, I just ran it as, as like a, a, a fun, like little, little deal to see how much money I could earn just signing up and doing it. And man, like it was like hundreds of dollars, right? And I'll, I'll share the link to that episode. I, like I said, I don't know what's changed now. It's, it's been it's like, that was years ago and I, I did that. And, um, just test it out just to see like I'm telling people to go and get a like gig work like how much can they actually make right so I wanted to do it myself <laughs> and uh, so I can recommend it to people but anyways 
go pick up, you know, a little bit of a gig like Instacart or whatever, you know, drive Uber. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that, like doing like Uber Eats and Instacart and all those things are all good. But that's the second thing I would do is don't look at like how you can negotiate or cut back, but how can you earn more? And gig work is one. The, the last thing that I would do is I know it's tough, but sometimes you got to make some temporary sacrifices. Sometimes you got to look at your expenses and see what can I cut? What can I actually cut this month to make it? And maybe it's canceling a subscription. Maybe it's dining out less often. Every dollar counts in cutting back to help avoid taking on that terrible payday loan debt. Everything matters. So what can you cut? What can you cut? That is the biggest, biggest thing. Uh, there's there's a lot you can do, but those three things are number one. Like those are paramount. Communicate with your creditors, go earn more money, or find places in your budget to cut. And if you do all three, it may make life a whole lot easier, right? Because you don't have to earn as much, you don't have to cut as much, and you don't have to make as many phone calls and sit on hold, <laughs> right? You don't have to press zero a gazillion times and ask for to speak with someone, right? Like, like there's a if you do all three, you don't have to do but a little bit of each. 33% effort in each. I just made that statistic up as most are made up. So I hope you got something out of this. Like at the end of the day, payday loans might look like a quick fix, but they're really and truthfully a trap design to pull you deeper into financial hardship instead of exploring these smarter alternatives that we've talked about today. All of those are options regardless of who you are, right? So remember, it's okay to face financial difficulties. Everyone does it. We all will at some point. But the key is to find out how to do it the right way. And I will tell you, payday loans is never it. Absolutely never it. So Hopefully you got something out of this episode. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more tips on how you can protect your financial health. And like I said, if you know someone that's either thinking about getting a, a payday loan or or that you you know that has payday loans and you just they consistently are going in and out of them or whatever the case is, share this video, share this episode with them and maybe help them protect their financial future because Man, I'm telling you, payday loans are rough. They are rough. So let's help each other avoid the payday loan trap. So hopefully you got something out of this episode. Hopefully you were able to take something away. And if, if like I said, if you did, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and just help continue to grow a community of people that are working to improve their personal finances. If along the way you ever need some help with your personal finances, just making sure you're on the right path to, to achieve the things that you want to achieve, uh, financial coach might just be the perfect thing for you. You can always head over to thefinancialmirror.org and hit book now in the middle of the screen and schedule a free consultation with me so we can sit down and go over your personal finances and ensure you have a plan to reach your financial goals. So like I said, share the video, like the video, comment on the video if you you have any experience with payday loans and you just want to spread that message to others of how horrible they are and how you were able to, to get out of it for some little encouragement for those that may be facing the, that difficulty right now. But uh, like I said, it, it, they're never good. Always find an alternative. So until next week, continue improving the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's financial mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves, change our mentality, and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives.